Hi everyone, welcome back. Welcome to my another brand new playlist. And this playlist is not like separate playlist. We are already talking about GraphQL in my previous videos. We covered Apollo GraphQL, we covered uh, Yuga GraphQL uh, with Express. Now it's time to talk about these things with Nest.js. So I'm going to add all these videos to the GraphQL master playlist. Okay, I will add that in the description. But like if you are already aware about how GraphQL works, how it works with Express and you wanted to explore how it is going to work with Nest.js because on my channel I have a lot of content on the Nest.js but all are talking about okay how to build a microservices and all but what about if I want to build a service which exposes the GraphQL interface instead of REST interface right so those things we are going to talk in this playlist so our focus in this playlist will be on different aspects first of all Nest.js GraphQL setup okay how to actually build the service from the baseline then how we can work with the different database like mongoose with the mongodb type ORM with mysql postgres and then prisma with any of the sql or no sql database that is the main agenda and we are going to talk about multiple examples okay the main focus is how to how graphql query mutations and subscription can be exposed through nest.js service now changing the database changing the orm layer is just a simple topic which we can discuss okay because the the main point is writing queries and mutation rest it's all about data data can be managed through any orm odm layer like next sqlize type orm prisma mongoose and your database can be sql or no sql Okay, we are going to build, we are going to build a whole lot of new GraphQL APIs, we will expose them, we will actually play with these queries and mutation through uh, API documentation, right. So that is the overall agenda. If I talk about the multiple sections, then these five sections, this whole course is divided. First, we will talk about the baseline of Nest.js GraphQL. In that also, we will talk about multiple options because Nest.js GraphQL module provides multiple options to manage the typings, manage the schema, it auto generates the schema for us. Okay, so we don't need to, we just need to worry about writing the resolvers and rest, it generates the schema for us, the typings and all. Uh, section two will be, okay, let's focus on mongoose and let's expose some user APIs or blog post APIs. Now here we are talking about the mongoose, which is going to talk about to which is going to talk to mongodb database and we will trigger the query and mutation from the console section 3 here we will replace mongoose with the type orm or any other orm odm layer let's say next next is a lightweight query builder or we can talk about the type orm which is uh, typescript heavy object oriented uh, object oriented class based orm layer which i have used heavily in my previous videos Section 4, here we are going to talk about some real world examples like blog app, user authentication, authorization using GraphQL, how to manage the exceptions coming from uh, the service layer to the GraphQL interface because GraphQL queries and mutations are different from the REST APIs. They both are using the same HTTP protocol to send get put post. In the GraphQL we will talk about only post APIs, HTTP post method you will be sending query and mutation. So how to deal with the exceptions, the messages which we are receiving and authentication authorization. Let's say you are using token based authentication then how we can protect the other APIs uh, when we are using token based authentication in the GraphQL. Another important thing is GraphQL APIs either you can create them from the scratch or you can also create some kind of a gateway. Uh, I mean GraphQL service can act as a service which is exposing the GraphQL interface or that service can act, act as a middleware which is talking to the multiple REST services and ag aggregating the data and exposing the data to the client interface. Because I don't want to write my all services from scratch in the GraphQL. I have my REST based services so I can plug this GraphQL, Nest.js GraphQL middleware on the top and that act as an API gateway and my client can access all the APIs through the GraphQL interface. That's the best way of aggregating the data coming from multiple REST-based services. And then 
I also have a thought of covering the Prisma because we already covered the Prisma ORM. Now in this video we can also talk about okay how Prisma ORM will work with the GraphQL NestJS setup. Okay so there are a lot of things to cover in the whole playlist. So stay tuned. I'm going to post these videos first because this is the old playlist and I wanted to finish this. I have already finished the ORM ODM playlist. This is all about GraphQL master playlist. So I will finish this and then I will move to my full stack clone which I hope I know that a lot of people are waiting to see the Uber Eats clone coming up. Sorry guys for the delay but things are things. I am not getting much time but whenever I am getting time I am recording my content. Uh, thank you for watching. Hi everyone and welcome back to my playlist and here we are covering NestJS with GraphQL. Okay, so this is we have already talked about the introduction and the agenda of this whole playlist. Now we can get started with the writing NestJS application with the GraphQL. So we are going to start everything from the basic like okay, okay how to build the basic NestJS application using Nest CLI. So we are going to use NestJS CLI and we are going to build everything from scratch. Okay, like we can generate a simple NestJS project. And then that in that project we will introduce all the different things like okay, how to introduce the GraphQL using NestJS GraphQL modules. And then we will write resolvers and expose query and mutation from the APIs. So I'm starting this project from the scratch so I can explain all the different parts, not some existing boilerplate code which I already have in different repositories. So let's wait for the CLI then what we can do is it's same as the angular CLI kind of setup. Here we can just do is nest new. This is the next command which we can hit nest new and the project name. So, so this is our scaffolding. Uh, we are going to use npm. It is installing all the modules and these are all the folders and the files getting created. Okay, we have nest CLI, we have package JSON, we have tsconfig because the code is in TypeScript. We can see one controller, one module and one service. And this is the main module which is the root module and the main.ts is bootstrapping that root module. Okay, so it has all the basic structure which we need for the project. Now we can start adding the NestJS GraphQL and the GraphQL dependencies we are going to use Postgres. So we can also add the dependencies for the type ORM because NestJS type ORM and NestJS GraphQL these are the two main modules we are going to use. So we were using NestJS CLI and with the help of NestJS CLI we were able to create uh, this basic application. This is the basic folder structure which contains the default service, controllers and the modules. Now we need to introduce the we need to introduce all the required other modules because we are now using GraphQL. So there is a NestJS GraphQL module which we have to add to our this module setup. Before going to that direction, one common topic I also wanted to cover is let's make this uh, folder structure production ready and include all the required things we wanted to have in a project. So what all things we always want to have in any particular JavaScript or TypeScript project. So recently I introduced, I added one blog and this blog particularly talks about how to baseline a NestJS microservice. Okay, we call something baseline when it includes all different aspects of a microservice. Let's say here we are writing a GraphQL based service. So it should contain all the test setup, all the linting setup, all the guidelines, all the, the linting setup. And even you can also introduce some GitHub hooks using Husky so that whenever you do the commit, it automatically run the prettier, it checks for the linting and it format your code, right? And it also executes the test cases. You should also have the configurations for the Docker and Docker Compose. You should have the proper compiler configurations and the build configuration with the TS config. CI pipeline, if you are planning to deploy it to Heroku, let's say we are building the GraphQL, uh, simple GraphQL app, you can also plan to deploy it to Heroku. 
So all these things should already be configured, then we can call a project as a baseline. And the baseline means just after using nest CLI, we created a bare bone folder structure. Now we can add on all the required things. Okay, I, I need a prettier, I need a ESLint, e, ESLint RC, prettier RC, I need a GitLab YML file, I need a proc file for the Heroku deployments, or maybe uh, the CI pipeline file based on your deployment. Either you are using uh, uh, GitHub Travis CI or GitLab, uh, GitLab CI, but your, your file structure can be something like this. Okay, this is my target. So what do we have in the, the baseline structure? You should have a ESLint RC. If you are using Docker, Docker file and Docker compose dependencies because we need uh, the Postgres container and the node container. And then just configurations because we have to write the test cases using just in the nest.js and all the build configurations for the TS config. Not more if you wanted to start the applications or you can just use uh, nest CLI start dev command and uh, all the hooks the husky which is uh, pretty much working with the commit lint and the prettier to enforce the coding guidelines right commit commit guidelines even the commit guidelines when you are randomly putting any commits so this blog particularly talks about okay what all different modules we need so i will be just adding those in the project and start using them so let's say i wanted to use a commit lint so i need to install the commit lint cli and the uh, commit convention, all these uh, modules I will be adding in the dev dependency of our project. So here these are our dev dependencies. I will put them somewhere in the middle. We already have the, I think the ESLint configuration, so we don't need to worry about adding them again. Okay, then I think I need to add a config, commit gen config in the package.json. And I think here we are using jest in the package.json only. So we have to remove this jest configuration. And we can have particularly jest e2e config, jest config and all. And I need to write commit lint config.js file in my code base in the root. This will enable the commit lint. Okay, this is the first thing. Now I can do, I can introduce Husky in my project. So what I will do is, first of all, I can install. And this should also install other modules, which we have recently added. Okay, so what does, what will Husky do? Husky is, I mean, when you are running a scripts automatically, you can actually introduce the GitHub hooks. Like when you are doing a commit, then what you want before commit, you want to give a proper format to your commit. Commit can be a feature, can be a bug fix, refactor, build, or the style changes or something like that, right? So before you even create a commit on your uh, GitHub history, Git local Git history, what it will do, it will run a Lint, it will run a prettier and it will just check all the formatting of the code. So you can introduce the get hooks. So what you can do is you create a dot husky folder and it will create and you can introduce the get hooks. Get hooks can be simple as a git commit, git message. So there are pre and post hooks you can introduce for commit like prepare commit message, pre commit commit message. So what we will do is uh, uh, we can create one script here prepare install so looks like we already have so we can introduce this script that will do some baselining so when i do npm run prepare So basic uh, git hook is installed. This is ASCII.sh. Now here we will start creating these GitHub hooks. Right? So what we are doing is inside Husky we can create this commit message. Uh, 
Okay, then we have a pre commit. Prepare commit message. If you look into the script, it is nothing but it is enforcing some guidelines on us. When we are creating new commit, these pre and post hooks will execute. Okay, let's say the commit message. So these are some of the hooks I'm adding in my project. This is pre commit and this is my commit message. So now, whenever you are adding a new commit, then this pre commit will hook will introduce and it will run the lint and it will run the pretier. And it is just using the husky to do all those things. Okay. Now, with husky, we can also think about introducing the prettier because husky is enforcing prettier to execute so let's talk about that first setting up the eslint and prettier so for the eslint like the e, now tslint will be deprecated soon we will be using eslint everywhere only so these are some of the modules i think these are already there if we look into my package.json all the eslint related dev dependencies so these are starting from here to here so do we have everything already there the parser eslint plugin and config parser and the config prettier if you wanted to add on other plugins it's you can add but looks like i do have everything required now i can create my eslint rc i think we already have some default one now it depends on okay what do you want this eslint rc is using extending these plugins the recommended ESLint uh, standards and the prettier standards. So I think this is already satisfying our needs that we are using recommended and we are also introducing the prettier formatting. So prettier will override whatever the, the, the rules which has been imported from the TSLint standard. Okay, this is also doing the same thing. We are using recommended and ESLint recommended and we are also using the prettier recommended. Okay, now prettier RC. This is the file which we can introduce. These are the, the common prettier configurations. We can add some more. These rules will override some rules, some standard rules provided by the ESLint. And then we can write these standard npm scripts. What are what these are doing? npm run lint, npm run prettier, npm run prettier write, npm run format, npm run lint fix. These are something which we will need while writing the, the code every time, like prettier, prettier write, prettier format, and all these things. I think some of these we might already have, like the format. So what we will do is we'll put our stuff, and this looks nice now. And we can execute npm run prettier. What it will do is it will run prettier against all the JS files, TypeScript files, CML, and all. Prettier write. You are giving a write to the prettier to update the files if there is a formatting mismatch. Right, and then there is a format. So these are all the commands which we are using. And then build configurations. It's good to have a one common build configuration, but what we can do is we can have a two build configuration, which is already there in the Nest CLI. This TS config build is extending the TS, global TS config, and sometimes you wanted to override the, the TS config parameters just for creating the build. Then you can actually override them. So this is my main TS config. What it is saying is okay, modules I'm using common JS. My out directory is this, target is ES2017, all the TypeScript compiler options, image uh, metadata decorators, experimental decorators, and all these flags, strict nulls, and all. Now, if I wanted to override few properties, I can do it. So, what I'm doing is you can extend the TS config and create the build config. And here I can provide my additional compiler option so 
let's keep it dist only okay root directory is forward slash declaration false remove comment so this is particularly i am creating for build right i don't need source map and all these things and i wanted to exclude all the things which i don't want to be uh, executed in the build so there may be a coverage there may be some other folders you want it, you can exclude all the type of folders which you don't want it to put inside a build so i don't want it to build node modules all the tests everything which is there in the disks i don't want it to build it because that is the outcome and tests i'm skipping right and then all the test related configurations test related configuration means we are using test and in this baseline project which is generated from the nest cli here i think the jest configurations are has been placed in the package.json itself what we can do is we can remove or isolate these things let me just clean up the package.json here we have the jest configuration but what happens is when we are writing the the nest js we always have the the jest config then we have jest e2 config and lot of other just related configuration so it's better that we should create our own configuration files for the just and we already have i think the commands to run the the tests test is using just test watch test coverage right so what we can do we can create a simple just config file just config.ts and that will take care of all these things and one more file which you can add is just e2 i think it should look like just e2 e dot config dot js and with some modifications from the existing just configuration you should be able to add okay so let's take a look on to these things we have i think we need to check the the just config it's just config.e2e like if you wanted to write end to end test cases you want to have something else then you can have this separate configuration and what does it has it has the same things but if you want to execute the test because here we are targeting a particular set of files right which contains the e2e.js e2e.spec.js so i will just test config e2e and then we have a just config just config if you read this configuration file it is plain and simple what it is doing is set of files here these are the set of files before running the test cases what it is saying is inside test i need set of environment variable file so inside test i will create one file which will help us to bootstrap the environments for the test projects and what we are doing inside this we are just writing these two lines of code what we are saying is use the dot env and put everything inside process dot env from env dot test so we need to create env dot test file that will be used for test test environment and dot env will be used for local environment and this we are not going to commit we are going to create env dot example file so you can take a look what all environment variables we are going to populate okay so looks like we have most of the setup ready now we can introduce the docker which is the last thing i think we have and that is also important one so most of the projects which i am building are either using postgres some kind of orm tool with some database mysql postgres or mongodb so it's like it's two container project one is a node js container another is a postgres so we can create a docker file sometimes i mean your baseline project should contains all the configuration it doesn't mean that you wanted to use all the containers you can disable enable or command the container you wanted to use here we are using type orm so so we also need to create orm config.ts if you are using type orm then you are already aware we are not going to put anything inside this but later we will introduce put something there 
Okay, then we have TS config. Now let's create a Docker file. Docker file is same as like other Docker files. What we are doing here is we are just spinning up the node container and copying the code, copying the package and package log file, and just doing npm run build and exposing the code. This is from all my baseline projects we have. And finally, we are executing this command npm run start prod. Okay. And this is Buster Slim image, which is a lightweight image. And we are using this Docker entry point. This script is just to, okay, when you are starting the Docker again and again, we don't need to execute npm install and all these things or type ORM migrations. So these are some custom script I have added as a Docker entry point, which will get executed and it will save our time when we are sp spinning up container again and again. And then we have Docker compose file. I always create Docker Compose and Docker Compose Override. The Docker Compose contains your containers, what all containers you want to have. And I think we should have something already placed in this. So what do I have? I have two containers. One is the node container, another is a Postgres right node container is being built from this current folder there is a docker file i think we can skip the volume for the npmrc and it is pointing like this this is a volume mapping of the current source code in the root directory with the app inside the container and we are using postgres another is i'm using docker compose override here i will expose the ports and all the environment variables okay i misplaced the code should be docker compose override and this should be inside docker compose yml you may not need a node.js container what i do is once your application is up and running you can actually start using node even without container you can just do npm run start dev and for postgres like if you are using database connection you can use just local host and the port name the port name for the database is 5434 for your host system Okay, and these are the environment variables I have. So this is a plain and simple Docker setup. We will spin up the, the containers and we will see how it is going to work. Okay, so if you look into Docker Compose override file, here we are using Docker utils. We are mounting Docker utils into uh, entry point for the Docker. So what this Docker utils will do, we can have some custom script which will bootstrap our Postgres container with the predefined set of database. So what we are doing is we are passing this variable, right? Example API, example API testing. So what we want is when the container is coming up, we already have these two databases, and our application starts connecting and using these database. So we can create this Docker util folders. So this is the, I think the last thing we have. And after that, we will test our application. So create new folder and we have Docker utils and inside docker utils we are going to put some scripts okay so docker utils i mean the first script which is entry point script is not needed for the database we can also remove it what we want is with the with the help of this script we wanted to create the database okay so i already have a predefined script what it does is it uses this variable it logs in with the Postgres user and it will create these two databases. It's like running a loop on the Postgres multiple database and it actually isolating the names with the comma. It, it sees there are two databases and it is just creating these two databases for us. I mean, it is executing this script, this method two times by passing the database, right? It is saying create user, this particular data, database, create database this and grant the privilege on this database to this user okay okay so the this is all about the docker setup we have i mean i really i usually don't run the node.js on the container because i already have a lot of container running on my system 
I will just run Postgres and I will use the Node.js local setup and whenever you wanted to use a database so you can use the environment variable with the port uh, which is specified for the host which is 5434 I mean you will connect to the Postgres container using 5434 through the host name is localhost okay now another very uh, small things we can add on we can also specify the engines in the package.json file so currently let's say if you are sharing this project with your colleague and he doesn't have the appropriate version of node.js and you have a dependencies which has which are dependent on at the particular version of uh, node.js then it will break right so in the engines we can specify the version for the node which can be uh, 12.x or we can have 14.x okay and the npm version we can also specify the npm version which is which should be greater than and equal to 6.9.x or something like that and there is another thing is the dev engine for the dev dependencies that also we wanted to keep same 12.x and 14.x and to enforce this we have to add on add a script and there is a particular node module which can help us in doing that that is i think fbjs script that we have to install first and then add a script in our package.json scripts so this is our script and here we can add another script what it does is it will check the engines and whenever you are running command it will check the engines from the package.json if they are not aligned with the node version you have it will throw an error okay you cannot run this project blah 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 okay now it's time to run the project now uh, other configurations you might have is the new relic some kind of application performance monitoring tool you have new relic uh, or some gitlab ci yml or something like that so let's say i have another file is gitlab ci dot yml that i will check later that what all things we can have inside this right or you can have some another configuration based on your ci ci uh, tool like circle ci travis ci or gitlab ci and npm rc file if you are using some external private module or your organization has a gitlab registry or some private npm registry from where you wanted to fetch the modules in that case you can have npm rc rest we have a env.test env.example configurations if you wanted to use nodemon nodemon i this is my favorite module like whenever i change the code i wanted to restart the application but that is also provided by nest cli i think that is start dev it actually watch all your changes happening in your src and it will keep restarting your application so nodemon is not required you can have a new relic if you are using some application performance monitoring tool just write a nice and clean readme file and this is your the basic project now we will run the the docker clone containers and we will see the application running okay so let's start our application uh, what we can do is first we can check our docker container it is running Okay, we can just do docker compose down. We'll kill this container and we'll create this container again and we can also check if any of the volume has been created by this. Okay, so docker compose up. So because we are also going to use this uh, Postgres database script, 
which should create a database for us uh, let's see how it goes and then we will start our application i think we got some permission issues okay it has created database and it has interrupted here permission denied so let's do ch mode docker utils and then try this again maybe we need to kill this docker volume if it has been created even kill the container just for cleanup and then do the docker compose up again okay now you can see the statements it is creating the role creating the database and we are good this container is up and running we will use this database once we have the graphql api is running and they start you consuming using typo rm okay for now we can just see our application uh, we can do npm install again because we have added some packages directly in the package.json so it's better we do npm install again that will install all the, the required dependencies which we have added additionally and then we can do npm run start that will just start the application where we don't have much right now it's just uh, going to bootstrap on 3000 port later we'll introduce all the configurations like uh, populating something in the env like something like connection url host port and all the runtime configurations which we need for type ORM for the GraphQL modules. Okay, now to introduce GraphQL in our project, what do we need? So currently we have basic bare bone structure with the, the project baseline. Now we will start adding things onto this project. Okay, when I say some things, that means NestJS GraphQL module because that will enable our nest.js microservice to expose the graphql interface then we will write uh, mutations and the resolvers those are nothing but the the es6 classes typescript classes and we will write some modules so inside src we can create uh, modules and inside modules we can create all the modules which we want either it is a domain or a module so we can create api module sometimes it is little slow okay and we can do npm run start dev that will keep starting my application so instead of modules i will call it as a domain and inside domain we can create all the entities let's say inside domain we can have there are two type of folder strat strategies we can use in the nests enterprise project either you can call it as a module so okay the user module account module feature module and every module will contain their entities controllers dtos services factories providers inside that folder let's say if i'm creating a user or auth right now inside user i will create all the dto let's say dto and then i will create services and controllers providers same as it is like but currently we are not creating a big application so what we can do i can use a aggregated folder structure strategy where I have entities which will contain all the entities services contains all the services so what we can do is let me just delete this one I will create domain again or now we cannot call it as a domain let's put a modules and here I can create okay there is a config module okay and we are going to have a database module 
one you can call shared module these are the modules and these are actually you can call external module like database module will be used by all the modules config module will be used by all the modules and shared modules and then you can also add a feature modules feature modules is like okay api module currently we have only one api module api can be a user api is account apis or something like that okay here we will put all the entities now this api module here we can put entity all our services all our controllers provided so this is this will become a root module and these are the additional modules to make it uh, i'm always confused with the names domain and in this domain i have all the the modules i can call it as a dto services controllers providers all these things i'm going to have and these are the external module like config module database module shared module and you will expose the domain module from here and domain module i will import in the app dot module okay this is a single folder stru structure i will put all the controllers of this whole project here dto's entities providers and services okay uh, let's see now in the next part like how we are going to introduce nestjs graphql i mean that is fairly easy what we can do is we can start uh, adding that as a dependency in our project currently it is just a bare bones structure so our node application is started but uh, let's add our additional modules npm install minus minus save these are the core modules so what we are going to use is nestjs graphql okay nestjs type orm i think i already have added that is nothing to do with the graphql nestjs graphql we have and type graphql for some typing support type orm for nestjs type orm and i will use graphql is another module and graphql tools i think i'm writing this correctly graphql graphql tools and apollo server express i mean this is all built on the apollo express server i mean this nestjs also built on top of express and nestjs uh, graphql is just implementation on top of that so it is hiding the overlying implementation and providing the annotations and all to create your resolvers and the queries okay and then i will install some dev dependencies respective to all these modules and we are good to start okay so we have all the required modules nestjs type orm nestjs graphql and graphql apollo server express graphql tools looks like we have everything and now we can start using all these modules in our app module let's see how we are going to bootstrap the app module or uh, we can just create one domain module because this is going to be the the second root module so we have app module app module will be dependent on the domain module so this will be everything so instead of providing everything inside app module i will use the domain module for all these things currently i don't have a controllers and services as uh, soon i will have these and i will introduce them okay so in the imports in the imports i need to specify what all modules i am importing so as i talked about we are going to use config module config module is something which is provided by nestjs config okay so what we need to do is config module dot i think i need to import this config module dot for root is a method and you can actually pass all the configurations Config module dot for root. The default implementation will look 
into your .env file and put all those environment variables in the process.env. Okay, we need to have a nest.js config. I think I already have it. Import config module from nest.js config. Okay, I was not having it. And then it is providing the validation schema also. With the help of that, you can actually validate your environment variables. So that is important thing. Validate schema dot joy object. And regarding that, I also covered one article on my blogs, like what all possible ways you can actually uh, populate the environment variables for your Node uh, Nest.js project. So managing environment in all different ways for your Nest.js project. Let's say uh, you are because either you will be using Nest.js config module or you will be writing your own config module. It's all same, right? Here what we are doing, I'm doing is config module dot for root, and I'm saying explicitly, okay. I'm just passing you this env file path which can be dev env production env just use that okay and if you are using the default implementation then it will just look for whatever is in the dot env and put that in the process dot env okay or you, or you can specify the environment file path or the other option is with the help of config module you can also do the validation schema what it does is it actually validates your Variables like env should be a string, port should be a number, or db url should be a string. All the environment variables either can be a boolean, number, or a string. You can also do a validate, right? Node environment variable, node env name can be develop, production, staging, QA, nothing else. The default will be development if you are not specifying. All these things you can specify, and you can also write your own config service, uh, something like this. Okay, here I wrote my config service and my own config modules and providing a mechanism to load all the config variables in the process.env. And when I, want, when I want to use it, I'm using it something like this config module, like this config service dot get dot db. Because I might have created a getter method in the config service. Okay, you can check out this. These are the there are many possible ways of doing it. We are just using one of it. So here we can specify all the validation criteria. Okay, so we are using validation schema to validate the environment variables and we are using joy. So let's install that module first and then we will import it. And here we can import this joy in our project. So we can validate all the environment variables which we are using. I copied from Nest.js documentation and here in the validation schema what all things we have. We can use okay node environment variables should be of type this, port should be of type this or that. So that I will be passing here. So another required variables we have is the database URL. We already know that we are using uh, Postgres. So for type ORM, the connection type will be the, the will be Postgres. And here it will be joy.string and it will be required. Okay, so these are the, the validation schema I have. What does this mean is all these modules are required and we have to pass them. Okay, this is all about the config module. Now, config modules we have a node, a node environment, port, port, and the database URL. These are the minimum basic things we need. Now, we can also use import the type R module because the type R module we are going to use everywhere in our project. So next is type rm because that is our database layer, type rm module and here we are going to dynamically initialize it using type rm module dot 
let's see how we do it type rm module dot for root async there are different methods type rm module provide for root for root async so here you can see for root async this is a synchronous dynamic initialization of a nest js project and here we can import we can provide the dependency because what it needs is it we need to feed a configurations here so we will be passing config module and we will be injecting the config service inject config service and inside use factory because these are the three arguments use factory use class so we will be injecting adding the config service we will be passing the config service of type config service and we are going to return the config module options for this module okay config service we need to import it from nestjs config and what we need to return we can return the whole nestjs type orm config module options so if we see type orm module options which are which are name uh, okay if we if i go inside this connection options these are all our connection options I think it should be extending type or module options. I mean, the connection options is the object which we need to pass to initialize this module. Okay, let's see this. So, what all things we needed? We needed the name of the connection, which is let's say default, and I will pass type. Type is Postgres because we need to tell type ORM, okay, my database is Postgres, and then I can simply use URL. And how you will get URL? We can use config service dot get and the same variable database URL. And all the other things also you can pass which are required entities inside entities you will be passing all the ORM entities which you have either you will be passing some directory name okay this is the particular directory where I have all the ORM entities created for type ORM and then synchronize which I always keep false even for local development Okay, so this is our type ORM config module. Now, next thing is uh, we will be using NestJS GraphQL module, and these ORM options are type ORM async module options. Okay, now next module we are going to use is GraphQL module dot for root because this is a GraphQL project. Okay, and just import this GraphQL module. Now, what all things we can pass to initialize this module, right? So, there are a couple of options like playground, uh, your all the definitions where you are passing. Playground is true. And definitions means you have to provide a path where the schemas are kept. Okay, so we will talk about all these options like how we are going to provide a definitions and what is a type path and what is a playground. Currently, I am passing all these things, but in the next video, we will talk about okay, what all different options you can provide. Either you already have a graphical schema you can pass or you can generate the graphical schema from the resolvers and the queries you have already written okay so let's see all these options in the next video where we will try to understand 
how nice is graphical module initialization really works okay because at the end what we need is type definitions resolvers and queries and uh, this is a simple implementation of a yoga graphql or apollo graphql server it's built on top of the same thing it's just like we need to write less code and we just need to use uh, annotations to do everything okay uh, let's catch up in the next video meanwhile uh, you can take a look onto this i will also deploy push this code to the github hi everyone and welcome back so this is the part 2 of our setup which we are doing for nestjs graphql so in the first video we did all the folder structuring we did all uh, creating all the different kind of files like for jest for testing for docker for creating the postgres containers then we set up the the hooks using github hooks using husky we set up pretty prettier and all the configuration part now we have started writing the actual code so here we have created a domain module in the domain module we are using config module type rm module and the graphql module okay what we will do is we will uh, start writing the modules let's say let's say we are creating a pokemon app here okay so what we will do is first we will configure the graphql module so if you look into graphql module dot four root it is taking all these arguments we might also need to pass some more argument that we will see so this is our domain module now this domain module can be imported in the app module i think i have already added this domain module and now as we already have this container running docker compose up i can just do npm run start dev and let's see we are doing the the live debugging so if there is any error we will try to debug this and we will fix that first thing i see is whenever you are using nsjs graphql module graphql module i think you need to pass the driver that driver can be apollo driver or any other driver we which we are using apollo driver is coming from the nsjs apollo and we can also use i think the other drivers which are specified here a mercurius that is also we have to use mercurius driver or mercurius driver config so let's see we are running the application and let's see how much it is able to pass we also need to fix all these different paths like where is the entity for the typo rm where are we keeping all the entity files and for graphql modules the type paths are correct or not and this is the definition it is going to generate by looking at your graphql type definitions it will generate this schema okay let's see i think it is throwing some error yes error missing driver option in the latest version i think earlier version driver was not uh, mandatory but now to allow the integration with the different drivers you have to pass the apollo driver because here you can also pass the apollo driver config the four root method is apollo driver config okay and for that i think we have to install some module which we can do so npm install minus minus save next yes apollo I think this is the module Nestjs Apollo and we can get Apollo driver from there. So we need two two different things Apollo driver and the driver config. And we can pass the driver to the graphical module. There is option driver that can be apollo driver now if you look into the four root method what all option it it really it accepts so if i mouse over four root method implementation if we look into the types 
so it is extending the graphical module options inside graphical module options you can see path type definitions type path and driver this driver you can either pass uh, a polar driver or the mercurius driver and all the playground you can also pass the schema the resolvers all these options i mean we just need to take care about the required parameters while calling this for root method now it is again breaking i oh okay we forgot to install because we are using postgres module and we didn't even install it so obviously it's not good it will break so we will install this another module which is pz postgres so if you are using type orm with the mysql then you have to install mysql type orm with the postgres then you need to install the pz pz is a module okay it will again throw an error so let's go back to our domain module now let's see the difference here this is the documentation so if you are looking for mercurius integration then you should be using mercurius driver and mercurius driver config similarly there is a mercurius driver config here and here we are using apollo driver which is coming from nesjs apollo okay you can also pass the playground true or false based on that it will expose the playground on the graphql route okay so let's see the other things okay i think this is installed this is still taking time okay so now we have postgres pz admin already installed now what we can do is npm run start dev and these are the, uh, our environment variables uh, node env port and database url and this is our domain module and currently we don't have any paths defined right these are the type path where you create a dot graphql files in your different folders where you are creating your resolvers and queries currently it's every folder is empty so let's see how it is going to react with that because i think it will not be able to initialize the graphql module if you don't have any type already created in any particular path at least one type definition already created okay so let's see how we do it now what we are going to do is let's say we are going to create some pokemon graphql apis where you can see the list uh, see the list of pokemons get the pokemon by id create a pokemon and all these things and here we see the error and the error is no type definition were found in this pattern okay because we haven't created one what we are going to do now is let's create something so inside domains folder i think we have domain module here what i will do is i will remove these folders you can still keep the entity and we are going to create uh, the apis here like in the domain i can create one is pokemon folder this is the pokemon domain and another folder i have the league okay and then we will start defining all those things inside this now let's say inside pokemon if i create the graphql file then my path should be something like this go inside all the folders and look for dot graphql file okay so this syntax will work the type path definition will work here what we need to do we need to create the graphql files now because we are writing graphql uh, nesjs graphql but still the concepts are same you need to create a type graphql file where you define your queries and your mutations and your schema types okay so we are going to the domains and pokemon so i will start creating the files here pokemon dot module dot ts then other important files i will create all of these pokemon dot graphql graphql file and 
what other files we need we need one service and we need one resolver pokemon.service.ts and then one is resolver file here you will define all the queries and mutation and service will do the will deal with the database getting things and all now this graphql file is important and here we are going to define all our types okay what all types we are using all the types we will put here so these are all our graphql types and we are going to use the same syntax type pokemon and here it can contains id as a string and this is required and then name as a string type name id name type and we also have a league for each and every pokemon so we are going to assign the type league this is another type another type which we have to create and now we will define all the queries so in query you see we are going to get all the pokemons it is going to return the array of pokemon but another thing is get pokemon by id so another thing is Pokemons, it is going to receive ID of type ID, I guess, and it is going to return a single Pokemon object. Okay, so this is inside our query. I think I need to install some GraphQL plugins so it can beautify this automatically. And we have type mutation and inside type mutation you will define all your methods like okay let's say i have a create method create method is taking some argument like there is a name string type string okay these are two arguments let's say it is taking and it is going to return the newly created pokemon then we have update like crud operation you can think of create update and what you will do is you will pass the id of type id and you will pass name is of type string and then this is also required type is also of type string this s is capital in the string when you are defining the graphql type definitions okay so we have type and mutation and then there is a delete delete is taking id only and it is going to return like it can also return another type deleted deleted is a custom type right so you have to define the deleted type which contains only one parameter delete is boolean it will tell you okay deleted true or false okay so there is a pokemon i think this is just a typo okay so we have defined the graphql file i think now if i try to restart this let's see because the league type is not defined okay that is fine so we will try to run this when we have all the type definitions ready so this is the pokemon.graphql now we just need to create a module resolvers and service and inside resolvers we will be using all these methods like create update delete uh, and the resolver will talk to the uh, injectable service that will be dealing with the type orm repositories to fetch delete update all these different kind of operations okay so now let's create the entities so we have two entities here one is a pokemon another is a league uh, i mean and there will be one to many relationship one pokemon can be a part of multiple leagues 
so we will create entities and what we will do is because these are type ORM entities and using repository pattern inside the services we should be able to access these tables the Pokemon and the league so there, there are two entities we are creating one is the, the Pokemon dot entity dot ts another is a league dot entity dot ts okay and these will be representing two different tables and what you will do is after you have written the entities you can enable the type or um, synchronize true so automatically these will be populated in the database let's say if i do synchronize true and you already know the power of this synchronize true means it keeps synchronizing these things with the entities so we have pokemon entity so pokemon entity is simple what it is has is it has a name type and one to many relationship okay league dot pokemon and then there is a league entity league entity is like uh, having many to one relationship with the pokemon i'm just copying this from my template this is the uuid then we have a league name and the league name has a relationship many to one so pokemon has a one to many so inside pokemon pokemon is can have many to one so this is the relationship pokemon entity is having so whatever the type so this league this league will represent a single league for the pokemon but a single league can be assigned to the multiple pokemons so it's one to many and this is uh, many to one okay uh, if i do npm run db sync i can do that manually also okay Uh, let's see it is a type error so we go to graphql and what it is saying is there is a type deleted syntax expected column found name delete okay because currently my project is not complete so i don't know like from where this error is coming okay we will figure this out so here we have a pokemon module pokemon resolver and service now after creating this entity are we pointing to this entity correctly so there is a domain module from domain module what we are looking into is the folder and inside the folder all the files having dot entity dot ts okay so that is good okay this is configured properly you don't have any problem synchronize true so whenever type or module is getting bootstrapped it will check it will synchronize these tables if these tables are not there then it will create both the tables in the database okay after the entities are there we can start creating the pokemon resolver and pokemon service so what do you mean what do you mean what so what i mean is we have to create a pokemon service which will actually use uh, this repository pokemon repository and will do the basic operation dot find find by id update create all these similarly we will define all the methods pokemon service the import important pa part in this is how we define the resolvers because there we are going to use custom annotations annotation mutation annotation query because we have already seen a lot of examples of CRUD operations even the the different examples i already covered where we are writing controllers services and helper service here we don't have a controllers here we have the modules resolvers and our service and this is the type definitions okay i am going to have these three different methods exposed in the resolver and i think two queries get uh, get all pokemons get pokemon by id and three different methods create update and delete
okay so we can define the other methods here which is like okay a sync show which will talk about showing all the pokemons and we can use these methods a sync show a sync get uh, show by id so we'll take id string a sync get all pokemons and there is update pokemon also based on some id and data so this is our service i mean i'm just writing it quickly id and there can be a data of type any while create also i mean it will not be any it will be representing some dto delete pokemon show and now let's start writing these methods okay here we can return whatever is in the table return await this dot what is the repository name pokemon repository let's make it little small pokemon repository dot find give me all the Pokemons and here find my ID. Here we are doing find one. I mean, all these are type or methods. And here we are doing where close ID is this. Okay. And inside update Pokemon, first we will do the find one. So we will get the Pokemon based on the ID first. If we got the Pokemon, then we will update it. What we need to do is Pokemon dot let's say the name which we are getting data from data, data dot name, data dot type. Data dot type. Once we update all the parameters, we can simply say await. Await Pokemon dot save so it will save the updated version and you can also return whatever is the Pokemon you have updated. So that is update. Similarly, we can have a delete. Delete will be simply all like this. I think there is a destroy but a destroy option. What we can do is first we will find one because we also want to return the which Pokemon we have deleted. So we can say this dot Pokemon repository dot delete by ID, I think, and we can pass the ID. And once this is done, we can return the deleted record. And we are not checking if this particular record exists or not. Those are all those things are for error handling cases. What if the record doesn't exist? Then you should throw an exception from here that should be handled at the resolver level. Okay, so here const Pokemon, or let's say we can use this dot Pokemon repository dot create create empty object and then set all these parameters so we created a pokemon object we set the name and data type from the data and then const saved pokemon and written that all these things we are doing we have create update delete and show get all pokemons the basic methods okay now the important part is the resolver like how we are going to map these service methods with the resolver we have defined the type definition the dot graphql file where we have specified okay this is the pokemon kind of model and we are specifying two query methods 
get Pokemon by ID, get all Pokemon, and there are three mutations create, update, delete. So, how the resolver will look like? Resolver is a GraphQL, uh, sorry, NestJS implementation for doing the same thing, which we are doing by creating a simple class and defining all the resolvers, defining all the mutations and the queries. So, we are doing it in the same way. We will just create a class and we'll use all the all sort of annotations and it will be an injectable class pokemon resolver and inside a constructor you will provide the service injection private read only this is pokemon service okay so we have done the constructor injection now we can start using something like this query here we i will write the method okay async pokemons so here this is the query i will i will import this query where it is coming from it should be coming from type graphql or nest is graphql and Pokemon. So what I can do is this dot we have this method. So return await this dot Pokemon service. Same as like in from the controller we used to call service. Now from resolver we are calling the service methods. Get all Pokemons. That's it. So similarly there is another query which is taking ID as an argument. Right. So only the difference will be okay here we are going to pass all the argument and the argument is the pokemon id right so this is how you pass the argument argument and the argument is the id the id is of type string do i need to import something So I need to import argument because argument is the input it's ARGS. I will be getting this from NestJS GraphQL. Let's see what is there now. Okay, sorry. This should not come here. This should be a part of the method. Get or get and I can call the appropriate method that is okay. Get all Pokemon. What is the other method we have? Show method and it is taking ID. It's better that we should just write get Pokemon. This method is nice and here we are going to call this we will pass the id ok so the I, the query methods are done now what we need to do we need to talk about the resolvers i mean the mutation resolvers mutation means you are doing create update and uh, delete so this is simple now instead of query you will start adding the mutation you will start adding the mutation and delete and we'll just import all the required things next is graphql and what method do we have there delete pokemon okay similarly we have the mutation create where we are taking all the arguments like the whole payload body and all name type these are the two inputs we are taking this is the mutation and we are calling the create pokemon with both these arguments and similarly you can write update delete and all now another important part is the resolver annotation here and it's a resolver for which particular entity and that entity you have to specify this is pokemon entity
Okay, just fix the input. Pokemon entity, we can get it from the entities and we are done. So this is the resolver. Now, when you import all the resolvers and the services in the main module, all these things will get resolved. So here is our Pokemon module. It's empty. Here we are using type or a module dot four feature Pokemon entity because we are accessing Pokemon entity and these are the providers. We can also export them if it is needed. Okay, this is our Pokemon module. Okay, where it is the Pokemon entity. Let's import these things. And this resolver is defined. We are done. So this is the Pokemon. Pokemon module. Pokemon module is taking these two services, Pokemon service and resolver. We don't have a controller because controller is for REST API router. Here we are writing GraphQL APIs. This is the type definitions, queries, mutations, and all. Similarly, same thing you will do on the league. Here you will create dot GraphQL. Okay, and you will define the types. And inside type, you will specify. Okay, this is my type league, which I'm using in the Pokemon also. And here I will specify type query. I will specify type mutation. And inside I will just define our create league, update league, delete league. These are the three methods I have inside mutations, which are actually updating the resources. And when it is coming to, when it comes to fetching the resources, I can fetch all the leagues or a single league by ID. So my type definition is simple. Now similarly, I will create a resolver and a service. Right, this is same as like the Pokemon resolver and Pokemon service. The whole agenda is to understand the whole flow, how it is really working. And then I will just uh, update this uh, league module with uh, league resolver and league service. And then we will see the whole demo together that how these all these pieces are combining and bootstrapping our GraphQL server where we can actually create the Pokemon, uh, fetch all the Pokemons, fetch Pokemon by ID and create a league, assign the league to a Pokemon, all these kind of operations. Okay, so we have already created league.graphql. These are like the type definitions. We have type lead and these are the queries and these are the mutations. And respective to the, to the league, I have created a service and the resolver. I mean, that service is simple, which is just doing a CRUD operations, create league, uh, get all the leagues or update a particular league or delete a league. The same kind of operations which we have done in the Pokemon service, where we are actually creating Pokemon, deleting, updating and getting all the Pokemon and getting a Pokemon by ID. So how we are doing it? So there are three important things. First of all, you have to define the dot GraphQL file, define all your types, queries and mutations. You, and you can also create a custom type like custom type like this. Here what I'm saying through this query is give me Pokemons. So it is going to give you the array of all the Pokemons and that is going to have these attributes. Pokemon by ID, it is going to give us a single object. And when you do the create update delete, create update should return the Pokemon object and delete should return the boolean delete, which is true or false. Similarly, the league.graphql, here we have the league as a type and we have two things, query mutations. You can also have a subscriptions here inside a query league, give me all the leagues, league by ID, create league should return a league, update league. So create league should take a input name and return a newly created league. Update league based on the ID and I'm passing the name. Delete league, I'm deleting the Pokemon league, that's it. And after this .graphql file, the another important thing is the service and the resolver, first resolver. In the resolver, we are defining the annotations like query, mutations and 
automatically these get mapped these are getting mapped to the graphical definition query you know it is not taking any argument and what it is doing is okay give me all the leagues here there is another query where we are taking the argument id as a input and returning the league by id here the mutation delete league update league create league so if you look into this method create league update league delete league all are getting mapped to the resolvers right so we have leagues and this is the pokemon all these are actually mapped to the our resolvers so what do you think about the pokemons how it is getting resolved to this pokemon array so that is getting defined in this resolver so this is the pokemon and these are the leagues so leagues means give me all the leagues pokemon and here we are just passing the id okay give me the league based on this particular id the rest all are mutations create update delete here also if you look at the resolver pokemon resolver here also we have all these methods the pokemons uh, create update delete and if you look into the graphql here also we have a create update delete pokemons and pokemon so we have pokemon and this is the pokemons so there is a kind of a mapping we are trying to establish and the imp another important part is in the pokemon entity because there is a one to many relationship we have and here we are doing eager fetch that means while doing a dot find dot find by id you don't need to provide a relations in type orm to fetch the the foreign key relationship data it is actually it is setting the relations to eager that means when you do the dot find it will fetch the uh, the foreign key table data also with that otherwise you have to do uh, fetch comma relations and pass the relations in that okay so this is all about this the important part is the mapping of the resolvers with your type definitions which we are doing here the the mapping of leagues league and so these mappings should be appropriate okay now the another part is let's do npm run start and we are doing type orm synchronization true so what it means is whenever we are making synchronize true and when you do npm run start dev it will always synchronize uh, your entities with the database so if i look into the database you can see i do have a league table this is a simple structure and i have a pokemon pokemon has the foreign key and it is having the league id which is talking to which is a foreign key i mean uh, this league id is a foreign key from the league table here we do have name and id so this id which is a primary key here is a foreign key in the pokemon table so if you look at the structure this is the league id we are passing okay so this is the database relationships now we can start this let's see how it goes if your type definitions are correct then you should be able to start it in one go otherwise let's say you did some typo and all these things then you have to resolve them and here you can see it is also keep synchronizing if you change anything in the entities this is a type or sync automatically synchronize so our tables are ready now we can start looking at the graphql definitions i have already imported both the modules here pokemon modules and the league module and now we can see this so there are different type of uh, graphql clients you can use by default when you hit this graphql you will see something like this and here is your schema you can see the the league these are the queries these are mutations now it has combined all the queries and the mutations together so this is the schema these are the queries and mutations let's say give me all the leagues give me a league by id give me all the pokemons give me a single pokemon mutations create update delete league create update delete pokemon and this is the pokemon type and the deleted custom types so here we can start writing the queries and mutation 
but I am lazy. I don't want it to write the queries and mutation. I can use this client. This is this will give you a single click execution. So this is Altair client, and you just put this URL, click docs, it will download the docs, and you should start seeing all the queries, mutations, and here. Let's say I want to create. So this is what mutation. Let's clear this out first. And you go here and click add query. It's simple. Hello. So uh, till now we have seen how this is going to work. We are able to start the NestJS application, and we were able to see uh, the GraphQL spec uh, through the browser. Now next thing, next next important thing we are going to do is assigning the the league ID to the Pokemon. Till now the Pokemon and the league entity both are independent. I mean there is a relationship, but through the GraphQL queries we are not associating them. So what we are going to do is we are going to create an assign mutation which will take two IDs. One is the Pokemon ID, another is a league ID. Okay, and we will same we will create a method inside a service. What that service method will do is it will uh, find the Pokemon based on the Pokemon ID and it will assign the league object to it. So it's like we are going to define the relationship and this assign method assign the league ID to the Pokemon we are going to expose through the mutation. So to do this we have to use the, the repository. We have to import the league repository inside Pokemon service and for that uh, we can copy this from the league entity here and we'll paste it inside a Pokemon service. Here inside this service we are using two repositories so we have to do some updates in the module also because currently type orm.4 feature we are doing passing only pokemon entity but now we are also using the league entity inside the pokemon module so there will be a dependency injection error if we don't import that we will see so here what we are doing is we are doing a find operation first find pokemon then find one league and then pokemon.league equal to the league. So this is how we are actually updating the existing Pokemon record and assigning the league to that. And then we will return the Pokemon object. So this assign league method, we are going to expose through the mutation. So if we are adding a new method, we are adding it in the service, then obviously we have to add the same method inside a resolver. And inside resolver, we are going to use the same mechanism like we have to define the annotations, annotation, mutation and assign method. So here we can see inside the resolver, we'll just copy this method mutation and we will just change it. And here we are going to use assign. It is going to take two argument. One is the Pokemon ID and another is a league ID. And we don't have type, so we have two arguments. And now we can call the simple service method, which is Pokemon service dot assign league that is a method we have so here we are just correcting the arguments and then we can just call the method so we need to pass two arguments here assign league and we are passing the Pokemon ID and the league ID now through the basic queries and mutation we can create create Pokemon create league and then we can use this assign method to associate the league to a Pokemon so that we can also see the aggregated data where Pokemon should have the league and league league list I mean the, the list of leagues also start populating the Pokemon data okay the another important part we have is the eager fetch there is a many to one relationship between Pokemon and uh, league and how to fetch the data like whenever we do a dot find automatically it is going to fetch the data because we are doing the eager fetch and here we can see we are able we are getting this error because we are not passing the another entity for Pokemon module so what we will do is we will copy the league entity inside Pokemon module and we will pass that inside a type ORM module dot for feature so that this league entity is identified in the Pokemon module and our application will be healthy again so till now we have created this assign method which is assigning the league to a Pokemon ID, Pokemon record. First we need to create a Pokemon, create a league and then pass both the IDs in, in this assign method. 
and this is how it is going to work so here we have created uh, the assign method this is our resolver and similarly we also have updated the service so this is creating error let's see what it is expected colon found bracket so let's take a look onto the graphql file because it's it, this error shows it is something to do with the uh, schema so i think we forgot to return uh, from the assign method now i think when we restart it should be able to resolve this error one more important thing in this example is we are doing a two way relationship but in the graphql files we should we should do this relationship one way only like uh, we are specifying the pokemon in the league entity league model and the league model in the pokemon right so it's kind of a cyclic dependency we are creating when we are fetching pokemon we can fetch the the leagues when we are fetching the leagues we can fetch the pokemons but do not make that property required okay let's see we are starting the server again and let's see that in the graphql spec how we can assign the league to a pokemon here you can see this is the schema file which is getting generated when whenever we are starting the application this file is automatically generated based on whatever the graphql files we have written whatever the type definitions we have created like the pokemon the league and all the queries all the mutations and this is the method these are the methods which are exposed through the graphql playground and here we can see uh, we can see the latest mutation which is assign assign is taking two ids id and the league id and what we can do is here we are creating a league we can just put uh, some new name this is creating a league we will copy this id and copy it and put it somewhere so that we can reuse this id while doing the assign okay now we can we we can talk about the create pokemon we are passing the name and here we will create the pokemon independently through the this mutation we got the id now we can use the assign here what we are doing is we are passing the pokemon id and the next id is the the league id so both we are copying and we will trigger this mutation this will define the relationship this is what it should do and this is the error i was talking about because the league is dependent on pokemon pokemon is dependent on the league i mean while defining the types we should not make these property required so you can see the pokemon dot league value here that is required because currently there is no association happened so inside league inside the pokemon type should be optional so it should not throw any error here we are able to assign now we can query the league the list of leagues and we can see what we are getting i mean ideally we, if uh, the the database ids are populated correctly we should be able to see the data but looks like that is not happening we are not able to see the pokemon inside the league objects it is coming empty array so we need to check the code what is happening maybe it looks like the assign method whatever the logic it was executing that didn't process things properly we can also check the the list of pokemons with the league is it populating the leagues with the pokemon and here you can see not all pokemons has a league and what we have done is we have marked league required inside a pokemon so we have to make the league optional in the pokemon type pokemon model type then it will just work as expected so now next thing we need to check the code where it is breaking there should be some condition which is not correct even in the database we can also check the record if uh, the foreign key is populated correctly or not first of all make this optional so inside pokemon league is optional because league id in the pokemon is nullable field not every pokemon will have a league assigned okay and we should avoid this cyclic dependency and keep argument optional if we want to do it now we let's find out where is the error so if we check the database inside database we can see this league id is empty that means while doing the assignment things didn't go the right way we go to the service and here we will check 
okay looks like we found the error this id should not be the pokemon id it should be the league id right because we are doing a find on the league entity and then assign that league to the pokemon record now we will restart the application and again try the assign method through the mutation and this time i think we should be able to assign the, the league id to the pokemon record we will again try the same mutation assign we have the league id and we have the pokemon id we'll pick any random pokemon id and uh, we'll also create one league we can pick some league from this league id we already have somewhere saved we'll use it and we'll just pass it okay we'll run the mutation now the assignment should work but i think our application is not started so wait and watch okay application is started and we can see this has been executed and now we can also check in the database and now we see the league id is populated now we will we can do the query like give me the list of leagues one of the league records should have the pokemon inside it so we'll just say give me the list of leagues and one of the the league object should have the pokemon records inside it so this will show all the leagues and you can see the first record it is showing pokemon so this is how we are doing the aggregation first of all we are doing the eager fetch from the entities second we are doing the aggregation through these graphical queries and mutation okay so this is how it works let's catch up in the next video thanks everyone hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my youtube channel and i am tarun and in this playlist we are already talking about nest.js graphql and we are going to finish this playlist before starting the new one and it's a long time since i haven't published a new video but this time my, my target is to finish up this playlist and talk about something brand new topic like swell.js and uh, writing microservices and developing the uber eats clone app which we were developing since last couple of days i didn't get much time sorry for that but now i will be uploading those videos and it will be fun writing all those apps okay so in this video we are going to talk about another example of nest.js graphql and typo rm and after that i'm going to cover nest.js graphql and prisma i mean both are equivalent prisma is now popular so people started exploring it Type ORM is something which is well established uh, stack and we are already using Type ORM, Mongoose, uh, different other type of query builders. So first finish up this, uh, then we will talk about Prisma. So this is all getting covered under the Nest.js GraphQL series because all are exposing the GraphQL APIs. Either it is uh, now we are using either Nest.js or the GraphQL. I'm going to add it into the master playlist and the link will be in the description hi everyone so if we look into the code like what all i have covered the same code is already on the github repository in first couple of videos we talked about the pokemon app in which we were having create pokemon update pokemon and and assigning a league to a pokemon this is something which we have covered in the graphql this was the generated graphql schema we had and if you look into the pokemon here we have defined the dot graphql files which contains the types queries and the mutations mutations for pokemon and for the league okay so this is you can say a starter 01 now we are going to cover 02 so in this 02 folder currently i have copied whatever we have on the 01 and then we will update the code in 02 folder and what we are going to do we are going to do authentication authorization at graphql layer like once you are logged in how we authorize the, the the mutations and queries all those things we are going to cover it's like you can say one more level down into nest.js graphql uh, with type rm and if you want to look into some existing examples which is talking about okay two type rm entities and how we can expose the queries and mutations so those examples are already here 
and rest all are empty folders which we will fill up while talking about these uh, stack like mongoose like prisma and here some uh, more example advanced example of the type or okay uh, let's get started then in the code hi everyone so let's get started with the another example uh, using nestjs graphql and typo rm this was the first example we covered i wanted to talk about particular two different approaches one is the schema first one is the code first okay when you look, look into the nestjs uh, graphql documentation you will understand there are two approaches it is providing code first and the schema first first we need to understand what are these two approaches and which particular approach this example is following okay so here we you can see we are using graphql module dot four root we are providing driver apollo driver and here we are providing type path dot graphql so if you look into these folders we are you can see dot graphql which is having this sdl syntax graphql type type definitions in the league and in the pokemon right so it is like a schema you are defining and based on that it is generating the final schema here dot schema dot ts this is auto generated but for this what are we feeding we are feeding this particular input we are feeding the type path so this is a schema first approach we are not writing the typescript annotations and typescript types for these graphql types but there is another approach which is code first approach in the code first approach you we are you we are going to use decorators and typescript classes to generate the corresponding graphql schema here this graphql schema we are generating based on this dot graphql files not based on the typescript decorators so this is known as a schema first approach we are actually using the so whenever you see the type path in the graphql module dot four root blindly you can say that this is the schema first approach you have defined a dot graphql files and it will auto generate the definitions in the schema graphql dot schema dot ts but when you don't see it that means we are using typescript annotations and types to generate the graphql schema dot ts so this example was talking about schema first approach okay in the schema first approach we were using type path and we were creating these uh, we were having this dot graphql module for each and every uh, entity modules like pokemon and pokemon league we were having these dot graphql files and finally we are generating the definitions in the graphql schema dot ts so what is the major difference here when we start using the code first approach so code first approach here we are actually using going to use object types path types all these uh, different types in, in our case so resolvers are still going to be there obviously obviously the resolvers and services the only difference here if i pull in the documentation they, that would be more helpful like i guess so this is the code first approach in the code first approach what we are going to do is we are going to use object types this is what we were doing earlier in the schema first approach we were defining the types in the dot graphql files now this particular thing a will get converted into the typescript classes because we don't need to switch between the dot graphql files and the typescript if we are going to use code first approach we don't need to write it we can just write a simple model like author has a field so we are going to use object type and field which is coming from the nestjs graphql okay all the typings are there field int boolean string object types so whatever you are defining in the dot graphql schema that will get converted into a es6 typescript class with types and the object types and fields these are the the annotations you have to use to tell okay this is representing the author graphql type having these three fields id first name last name and the post post is of type uh, array of post okay so now finally when the the above graphql class above class will get converted into this kind of a type so this is next js will generate it we are using field object types and all so similarly i mean you can define you can put more definitions more uh, information about using this field decorators like what is the 
defecation region descriptions and what is the type here like let's say the posts is of type post array so they we are using the array notations the only difference we are doing here is we have added these fields rest it looks like a simple dto class okay so this is the approach we are going to adopt in this particular example here you can see uh, we have the post as an object type and it has all these three different fields so here we are going to first we are going to write these models and then we are going to write resolvers resolvers i don't see a major difference in writing a resolver either you use a code first or the schema first approach resolvers will be using your services to talk and fetch the data so like this is representing query it is returning author model author we have already defined like this is the post similarly we have author somewhere this is the author model so that query is returning author model that contains all the, the required attributes and in the author model we have to resolve the posts post like uh, when we are getting a author then we also wanted to return all the posts from the author so we have we wanted to resolve a particular field like, like posts in that case we have to pass the author id so we are resolving a particular field post for that we have to use it so resolver resolve field arguments all these are also notations arguments like this can be a single uh, dto class or single variables of type int boolean string object and this is resolving a particular field in from the model so there are a lot of examples here like this query returns author so this will gets in indirectly gets converted into this sdl type query this is of type query and it is returning an author you can see it is returning an author and taking id as a integer input which is required okay so this is how it is going to work on so the query annotations here you can specify all these inputs and in the argument decorator here you can define argument a particular variable or a particular object type let's say this is get author which is taking id as an input here it is a create author i see it uh, like you wanted to specify this particular method is taking five arguments so in that case you can't keep writing okay first name last name instead of that you can create a get author argument this is the class argument type can have a multiple fields inside it okay so this is the argument type and all these fields are inside it so these are the annotations and once once we start using these these looks like dto model classes but with the object types and the field types are already defined and when it comes to a passing an argument in the simple nestjs services we are using dtos uh, and uh, we are applying pipes and dtos here also it is the same we are just creating a class and putting the argument type annotations and for the attributes we are using field okay so in this example we are going to use code first approach code first approach that means we are not going to write so here we are going to use code first approach that means we are not going to write a dot graphql files the type path we are not going to provide we are going to use object types fields and these typings and this is how we are going to create a classes and we'll use these annotations to automatically generate the schema file okay uh, let's get started for that hi everyone and welcome back welcome to the second video and in this video we are talking about nest.js graphql so in the last video we talked about two different approaches schema first and the code first approach in the schema first we are writing the types we are using the graphql sdl language and in the type first in the so there is a schema first there is a code first in the schema first we are writing typing typings in the code first we are not focused on the graphql sdl language where we define type query type mutations and create custom types here we are going to focus more on the annotations more on the the types we are going to create through the typescript classes we are going to use this object type annotations field and different custom types which has been added in the nest.js graphql typescript module so only major difference is 
here we are not going to hear anything about schema anything about graphql uh, sdl types we are going to do everything in the typescript classes okay what i did is i recorded two hours video somehow the file is corrupted i did the live coding of the whole project but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to walk you through the code it's not that complex it's very simple because i have already covered many videos on nasjs uh typo rm with a postgres it's kind of same setup here we are going to have a three different modules this is the domain module and in this inside domain i have a category employee and project to show the relationship between different entities like projects uh, your organization project you have employees you have different categories uh, for the employees so there will be a one to one one to many many to one relationship in in the entities and we are going to expose query and mutations from all these three modules okay so inside domain module what do we have typo rm module next is graphql module and the config module same as every same as the last video so we have config module type or a module and graphql module type or a module takes the same thing it takes the url a type name we are not passing the 10 different argument you can just pass the url and synchronize is true that means whenever the nsjs application starts it will synchronize the entities with the database type is postgres logging is true logging means you want to see what all queries type rm is executing when you are hitting the queries and mutations synchronize true it will always sync the database with the entities graphql module here we just need to pass the definitions okay when when i'm looking into when the graphql will look into all the dtos and all the types what should be the output because output we have to generate either you use schema first or the code first and we are going to generate the output in the root folder that will be a uh, graphql.schema.ts typescript file with all the types okay so what is the next thing i have already created all these folders and setup but it's category you define all these services so what a module contains some modules a service uh, we don't have a controller because we are writing graphql we have a resolver instead of controller so we have service we have resolver we have module we have entities and we have dtos rest all the things are same what did we do is we now don't have a controllers because controllers are router and those are used for rest apis here we are writing graphql so graphql needs resolvers which can be exposed through uh, which will you consume the services and you will pass the resolver in the main module so if i talk about a simple employee module what it contains we are already using type or a module you pass the entity because i'm going to use only employee entity here so i have employee resolver employee service right and you can see employee resolver employee service i have dtos and i have entity so these are type or m entities now there are big differences here like you write a simple nsjs a type or m postgres app here inside entities we have to define the typings so what types you see if you remove the object types and the field it is same as the plain old entities we were writing for type orm with the different annotations like column unique uh, generated column primary generated column and then one to one one to many many to many annotations and then entity these are what the existing code we, we were writing now what we have added two things object type field and types because somewhere if you wanted to use int boolean these are graphql types which you have to map with your uh, columns in the database table okay this is the field i got it this is a number this is the string this is the string you don't need to specify anything about string but if you want some column to be nullable or some field in the in the graphql types which is going to be generated as optional pass nullable true and then this is employee let's talk about project first inside project we have entity project entity and here we do have only couple of things id name code and project has a one to many relationship with the employee that means one project can have multiple employees with it or you can say one employee can be tagged with many projects so it's one to many and it is like single project will have so employee dot project if you go to employee and look into the entity project so project is pointing to where it is yeah 
project so many to one many projects can be tagged to a single amp single employee so it's like one to many from employee to project so you have to define these really uh, these annotations by direction in the both the entities here i'm using one to many and here inside employee i'm using many to one that means many employee can be tagged to a single project so coming to the project entity project has this relationship then employee and then employee also has a further relationship with the category that a single employee can be tagged with a different category so it's one to many so one is employee many is one is employee and many is category okay so one to one one to many many to one these are the three different relationships we have created inside categories if we see the entity here we have defined many to one that means many to categories will be tagged uh, many to one that means many categories is tagged with a single employee okay these are the the different entities we have and their relationships now what we are going to do is uh, if you look into domain module here in future we are going to create these three modules also and then we will put those those three modules here project module employee module category module okay so we if you already know typo rm how to define the relationships and entities that is very easy now i will talk about very simple example is how to create a project for those we were also creating dtos same thing we are now also going to create dtos create project and update project so create project dto it's everything is same you can use annotations and all here i need to bind things with the type of uh, nestjs graphql type so i will be passing input type this is a one single field this is another field of type integer because this will be a body for the graphql post request which you are going to submit right so field update project here you might be just passing the id of the project and the code or the name so dtos are still simple same you can also add uh, annotation saying okay this is required or not using class validator and class transformer that id should be of number name should be of string required code should be of type number and required i kept it i kept that optional so now this is like partial type means you can pass the partial object from this this is how you can generate update dto from the create dto now we just directly go to the service and the resolver first let's talk about resolver because resolver is the replacement of your controller in the controller we were using annotation get put post and doing lot of things instead of controller we now have a resolver so it is resolving the type project because the project resolver is going to return the type project okay so you can see here mutation so there are a lot of things queries and mutations let's say talk about query first that is easy <coughs> so here inside this query what i'm saying is i have a project find one project so it is saying is okay find me one project so what i'm doing is here i'm using the arguments id integer and then i'm calling the service because we have injected the service here inside a constructor so here rest all is a crud operations like find all project remove project find one project update project and create project now the most important part is how we are taking the input in the controllers we were used to do the dtos here also it's a dto but the type is different right we are using the object types and we are using field for the properties if you see this create project input uh, it's a uh, of type create project input that contains the dto and here we are using input type and field when there is an input you have to use input type when there is an object create the object type use the object type so here we have a create project update project find one find all remove project simple similarly uh, we if you look into the employee there we have a resolver there we have service and entity and the dtos let's say like create employee update employee simple couple of fields with the input type update employee and when we wanted to create so this is the employee entity employee has a relationship with the category and the project many to one and one to many 
this is the employee service which is using the type orm repository same as the project repository here we are injecting the type orm employee repository and we are using this dot employee repository dot create and then save dot find all and here we need to populate the relationships because in the graphql queries we wanted to also fetch the data because we wa we don't want uh, the lazy fetch we want a eager fetch so wherever you are doing find all find one always populate always try to get the relations so employee has a relationship with the categories so employee repository dot find here we uh, don't have any where clause i mean i wanted to fetch everything so i'm just passing the relations otherwise you can also set where clause and pass your okay id is something like this but we don't have id we want to fetch all here find one so employee repository dot find one here we just want to find one if you wanted to populate the relations then you can also put okay find one employee find one employee and then populate the relationship or relations also which is categories similarly update first find one based on the id and then update the properties and save it then delete so this is the employee service that will be consumed by employee resolver which is nothing but a controller for graphql service so here we have a resolver it should be returning a type employee and we have injected the employee service and now you can call these methods okay service employee service dot create dot find all dot find one dot update dot delete dot remove here we took the input these are like aliases we have created mutation what is the mutation name is create employee whenever you hit create employee mutation it is going to call this create employee method it will take the create employee input which contains the employee name and all and then you are calling create on the service similarly this is the query which is returning the array of employees so this is the difference it is returning employee object array of employee sing single employee object so here you need to specify so that the types can be generated by looking into the resolvers this mutation remove employee is returning the removed employee this is updated employee this is the query this is returning a single employee object this is returning the array of employee objects because this is a find all okay so similarly we have a category so this is overall i just want to walk you through the code because there is nothing complex here if you look into the update we are doing update by id update by employee id here we are passing id and the input so first we are trying to find give me the employee with this id and then update it so we can directly save it okay this is just basically typo rm i quickly build it so we have a resolver we have a services we have entities and the dtos for all these three modules rest all we just need to run this project and we need to just play with the data hi everyone so let's start the application this is our database url i already have every other files to bootstrap the the database you just need to do docker compose up and as we already know it will create the database and we already have type or a module that will connect to the database and we have provided type or a module dot sync true so whenever you start this uh, it will create the entities so what is happening is let's see the database this is our database which has a project employees and category table you can use any postgres client and just see what is there in your database here we have employee id this is the employee table and this is the project table okay now we can start playing with the graphql apis this is our node.js i just did npm run start and it starts uh, working this is the nasdaq graphql with the postgres typo rm setup and there is no api routes because this is a graphql and we can use this graph graphql client altair client that is really nice you can just send the request and you will get the the documents document contains like what all queries and mutations this graphql server is exposing so these are the queries find all employee find one find one project
So these all queries we have find all employees, one employees, one project. And if we just check the mutations, these all are the mutations. Okay, like the these are like CRUD operations. And here we can uh, run a query or a mutations like find all employees, add query. Here I can trigger this query and let's see. We don't have a relationship data for now. I just wanted to fetch this information. Find all employees are returning empty. That means our GraphQL query is working. We just need to populate some data through the mutations. Like I can do a create employee and create employee add query and create employee is taking some argument I think and here I can just target this much data for now. So first name is one one one. Let's say is everything is string. It is running mutation. Okay, that's good. We created an employee and then I can hit the query again. And this is a really nice client because everything you get handy. You don't need to worry about writing the queries and mutation. And you are getting the data, right? This is what I wanted to show you. We can talk about all the other APIs like create employee, create projects, create category, assign category uh, and tag the employee with the projects. All these things are there, right? But this is just a simple demo. What I wanted to show every setup is there. We have Docker Compose up. Uh, so this is the type ORM sync. If you delete the tables, let's say if I delete the tables or delete the database or let's say delete the container. You can also try give it a try. I need to remove the volume also. And you purge the volume so the data will be gone once the container is gone. So we have removed all the volumes. I will do docker compose up to spin up the container again. And then I will do npm run start so that we can see everything comes up again. Here I will do docker compose up. So it should spin up the container. Then we just need to restart the application. And you know, we now we have a database up, but we don't have a tables type ORM sync will create those tables for us in the database and it should start working as it was. Now I can just kill the application and I will start the application again after I create the database. So here we can see our database is created npm run start has also started the application and we can see that now in the database because database is also pre again populated with the same table and I think now data is empty so it will show something like this. We can again trigger the create employees and see how it is working but this is how it is overall looks like right. We are doing the Nessius GraphQL code first approach where we are using these type script annotations object type input type field and all these annotations and we are making our task easier okay. So uh, that's it for this example. Uh, what we will do is in the next example, we'll talk up, we can talk about mongoose. The only difference is let's replace the type ORM with the mongoose and we can use uh, the, we can use the same set of approaches, schema first and uh, the code first. We can talk about the code first with the mongoose. We can have just a single model and we will just do the CRUD operation there, okay?